Hey guys, welcome back. It's Matt here and today we're going to be taking a look at what is on my smartphone for May of 2020. Haven't really done one of these videos in around five months now. So I actually have a new device, which is the S20 Ultra. And if you're curious about what is actually on my phone, like literally, it's a Rhino Shield bumper case with a Rhino Shield skin, which I'll be doing some videos on in the next few weeks. But without further ado, let's go straight into the video. Okay, so here's my home screen. This is the standard Samsung launcher. I have a Samsung calendar widget on the left, which just has my calendar events. And then as you can see, I have this KWGT widget. So I'm just gonna show you that this is actually from an app called Outline. You can pick this up for free, I believe in the Play Store. The link will be down below, but it does have some great add-ons for KWGT. Obviously you do need the paid version of that. So you will need to go ahead and purchase KWGT Pro. But basically all you do is you hit load preset, you go ahead and find the widget, which is in the outline section. It's the top left one, easy to find. And the way I put my image there was I actually went into the actual shapes. One of the circles has a image link and I simply replaced that with an image which was locally stored, which was just a photograph of me. So a little bit technical, but it is pretty straightforward. Now on my main screen, I do have this five by five grid layout. I've got just some standard stuff like social media apps, Google News, the Play Store, my settings, Google Photos. And then on the bottom, I have a Google folder, which just has pretty much all the Google apps that I have under my device. This is really handy to find. I pretty much use Google apps all the time. So I do need to access them pretty quick. And then I have Facebook as well as YouTube Studio. In terms of YouTube Studio, this is just really nice to track you guys, track my subscribers, and also reply to your comments, and just check everything is going as planned with my videos. And just as you can see at the top there, almost at 40,000. So if you could subscribe, definitely would help me out. I know I mention it a lot, but I really do want to reach 40,000. On my second page, I have another widget, which is also by Outline for KWGT, so you can go ahead and find that one in the pack. And then I do have Twitter, don't really use it too much, but it's pretty handy just to have there. I also have some banking apps and just in general apps which I use for a wallet or money or getting discounts or anything like that. I just throw it into the banking app. I also have utilities, which is probably one of my most important folders. It's got sort of stuff like Geekbench, Speedtest. It's got Cube ACR, which is a call recorder. And just generally it has sort of like VPNs. I've got the GoPro app, my PlayStation second screen app. Storm Radar is a pretty good one for weather. I've shown it off in the past, but it's basically a live radar of the entire world where the clouds are, the temperature, and you can go ahead and actually play through time in order to see where the clouds will move. You do have a custom option, but you do need to pay for that, which allows you to view more detail. Personally, the free version is pretty good. But yeah, other than that, I just have backdrops in here, which is one of my favorite go-to wallpaper apps. Now I have found a pretty good wallpaper app, which I recommended in the top apps of this month, which might actually overtake backdrops depending on future wallpapers and whether I like the wallpapers it's recommending me in a month's time. But personally, I really like the ones it's recommending right now. There's some great sections. The app is really minimal. It allows you to easily edit wallpapers and apply them pretty quick but most of all, they're high quality. In the middle on the bottom row here, we have this Nike Adapt app. This allows me to simply unlace or tighten my shoes. Also allows me to change the color of the lights on the side. I can also check the battery life of my shoes in case I need to charge them. And then I have a home app. Smart Life lets me access a smart vacuum cleaner, smart lights, cameras, LED strips. Ring obviously allows me to view my front door. Gimdao allows me to unlock the motorized lock on my door. Obviously the home app just connects all my Google homes and all the smart accessories up. And then tile allows me to find my wallet or my keys. I then have an app called threads, which I'm a big fan of personally, but not many people seem to be into it. It's basically a Instagram made app, which allows you to view Instagram messages in a more minimal and dedicated app. It also has this automatic status changer. So whatever you're doing, it will automatically update and tell your Instagram followers what you're really doing. And I guess people can find it creepy, but you can also manually set your own one. I personally really like it. It's super helpful if people are sort of curious why you're not replying to them. It can tell them you're busy. Other than that, you can view people's stories and simply go ahead and message them. So if you do want something like that, then threads is an option. And then once we get to the third page, things get a little bit more cluttered. I've got more groups. So folders of stuff like the basic Samsung apps, which is just all the stock apps that come on my phone. I then have some learning apps for university. If that ever starts again, I then have some health apps, which is just things like access to the gym, Nike shoe app, and just some other general fitness apps. 
I have a games folder. I don't really play games too much and I rarely open most of these apps, but I do have them on my device just in case I go on a long journey or a trip. And then movies is something you're probably really interested in. So this is Cyberflix TV and Unlock My TV. These are basically new versions of sort of like Showbox or Terrarium. They allow you to get free movies and TV shows in HD and they allow you to cast them um, with no payment, no sign up. You don't need a login. Really, really straightforward and easy to use. So if you would like to check them out, the link will be down below to the APK but it's really, really nice. Um, I obviously, I'm not encouraging use of this. It is sort of not recommended as you're not paying for any of the content, so it doesn't help the people who produce it, but I still have it anyway, so if you guys want it, the link's down below. And then on the last page, this is one I found recently when I was making some brownies, but this is called Tasty. It's a great baking and cooking app which shows you some pretty cool recipes. It also shows you reviews that people have made as well as pictures of other people following the recipe. And then I just have this Samsung Reminders widget, which allows me to just easily remember to do small tasks. In terms of the keyboard, as you can see, I have the dark theme on Gboard. Gboard is just my personal preference. I like the autocorrect. In terms of my S20, I have 120 Hertz enabled. I'm using it at full HD rather than QHD. I've got the full screen gestures on. Just personally like the gestures. It's really smooth and I do like the transitions. They're especially nice in the new version of One UI 2.1. And then that's pretty much everything on my device. Other than the fact that I have this different volume animation when I'm changing the volume up and down, that's simply because I'm using volume styles and I do have the premium version, which allows me to sort of get this extra multicolored version, but there's a bunch to choose from that are free. As you can see, there's a dark and a light theme. And overall, it's just quite nice to replace the stock UI. And you can go ahead and change the radius, the length of the slider, the background, all sorts of stuff. So if you do want to check that out, the link will be down below as well. Now you guys are probably wondering why I'm not using a third party launcher and I usually use Launcher. This is one of my favorite launchers. I definitely recommend it if you have any device other than the Samsung. One UI currently doesn't support third party launchers for their gestures. This is a huge deal breaker for me. I really do love the gestures and I don't want to sort of get rid of those and go back to navigation buttons or the old gestures. I really do like the fluidity of the gestures. And so I'm going to wait until One UI 2.5 where Samsung have actually leaked that they will allow third party launchers to work with these animations. So I really do hope that comes soon. I'm absolutely killing to use launch here. So link will be down below to that as well. But anyway guys, that is my device, that's how I use it, my widgets, and my most commonly used apps um, on my S20 Ultra. So thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and peace out.